Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Paintivity, and today we're continuing the uh, Cinderella phenomenon from Chapter 5. So, I don't know how much time I'm going to spend on it, but I'm, I, I really want to push through this. So, it's actually Chapter 5 is, na is named uh, Rod, so I'm guessing it has a lot to do with him. And we're right in the middle of a dream, which is pretty awesome. So, says, good morning, your highness. Would you like to play with us? You want to play with me? Yeah, come play with us. We'll have all sorts of fun. Well, please, just for a little? Maybe I can. Pink Tibby, what are you doing here in front of the gates? M mother good morning, your majesty. We were just wondering if the princess wants to come play with us. No, Princess Paintivity does not want to play with you. But mother, I, I do. Enough idle chatter, we must go. It's almost time for your dance lessons. But, Paintivity, do not make me repeat myself. Yes, mother. So she seems like she's very, like, I don't know. I don't know, she like locked her away. So this is like more of a lesson than originally expected. It's still dawn when I wake up. As much as I want to continue sleeping, I have no choice but to get up and prepare for the day. The last thing I need is an annoying lecture from the head maid. I've almost become accustomed to waking up this early, even if I do not enjoy it. Boy, I feel ya. Waking up in the morning sucks. <laughs> as soon as my preparations are made, I begin to make my way toward Emmeline's room, um, should she wake early. I'm about halfway there when I hear familiar voices standing far ahead of me are Sir Alcaster and Sir Mithros. They're trouble. Or at least one of them's trouble. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you sure this is going to work? Have a little faith in me, my friend. Friends? We're not friends. Sir Alcaster narrows his eyes and turns abruptly to look at me. Ah, Miss Paintivity, was it? Sir Mithros, Sir Alcaster. Have you been eavesdropping, child? He has no reason to be angry at me. If they were talking about something confidential, they shouldn't have been openly talking in the hallway. I'm on my way to Princess Emmeline's room, sir. That's why I'm here. I coolly look at Sir Alcaster, who looks like he's about to pop a vein. I can't help but feel satisfied at his reaction. In just a few steps, he's suddenly looming over me. I've never seen Sir Alcaster look so angry before. What's going on? Rod's now walking towards us with a scowl on his face. Sir Alcaster notices this and quickly steps back. What is his deal with her? There's just a little misunderstanding, your highness. Rod glances at me, his eyes narrowing. Great, I'm sure he's going to be blame me for this too, even though I did nothing. Well, at least he's protecting her. Much to my surprise, Rod puts himself between me and Sir Alcaster. Are you alright, Paintivity? He's worried about me? I slowly nod. Rod turns back to Sir Alcaster and Sir Mithros. If you don't have any business with Paintivity, I'll be taking her with me. Emmeline's already waiting for her. Sir Alcaster stares at me for a few moments before bowing down to Rod. I wonder if he knows what's going on. Because he seems to be, like, just absolutely out for her. Of course, Your Highness. Thank you. Rod turns to me again, his expression solemn. Shall we? He walks off before waiting for my reply. I look back at Sir Alcaster and Sir Mithros one last time before chasing after him. Ah, oh, she's hauling. The both of us spend the next few minutes walking in silence. Rod has not said anything since my encounter with Sir Mithros and Sir Alcaster. Are you okay? What? He already asked me that before. Is he really that worried? Uh, I don't say I'm not. I've never been treated with such disrespect by Sir Alcaster. He's needlessly hostile toward me. Rod scoffs. Before, he was forced to show you respect because you were a princess. Now, because you're a commoner, he speaks to you as bluntly as he speaks to everyone else. That does not excuse his rude behavior. Rod shrugs. He's a lot like someone else that I know. He gives me a pointed look. He always finds a way to scold me somehow. I scowl at him before turning away. You said that Emmeline was waiting for me. I didn't expect her to be up so early. Where is she? I lied. What? He lied to help me out of that situation? Why? Why are you helping me? Because while you're here, you're my responsibility. I may loathe the role, but I'll still uphold it. Besides, you don't need a reason to help someone in need. Help someone in need. I remember Parfait and Delora telling me that before, uh, that being good often involves helping others who are in need. Now that I've helped you, I'll be taking my leave now. I have fencing lessons to attend. Rod starts to walk off, but then stops and turns back to me. 
Don't get yourself into more trouble. I won't be there all the time to save you. I glared at him and crossed my arms. I'm not some damsel in distress, your highness. I do not need your help. Rod snorts before turning away from me and walking away. Can't really blame him. <laughs> Later that day, I watch Emmeline finish her etiquette lessons. I can tell that the teacher is impressed with her progress. Emmeline's able to correctly name all the glasses and cutlery. She's not so slow a learner. I had come here earlier in the day to better teach Emmeline about proper dining etiquette. It turns out that my lesson was valuable. You've shown great improvement, your highness. I'm glad that you have been diligent with your studies. No doubt you'll be ready for the ball soon. Emmeline smiles, her cheeks turning pink. Uh, th thank you. I wouldn't have done it without the help of a friend. Emmeline glances at me briefly and smiles gently. I really owe her a lot. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you have such a dedicated friend, your highness. Friend? Is that really what I am to her? But princesses do not have maids as friends. A royal does not mingle with commoners, especially not with servants. Mother told me that before. Emmeline does not treat me as a maid, but she cannot possibly think of me as a friend. After the teacher gives Emmeline several looks, or several books to study for their next lesson, she ends the lesson and excuses herself. Emmeline approaches, approaches me and grasps my hands. Thank you so much. I wouldn't have passed without your help. All I did was repeat the things your teacher taught you. But you're different. I raise an eyebrow at her. Different? I tend to get nervous in my lessons. My teachers are strict and intimidating. Boy, do I know the pressure of that. Anybody who has test anxiety or anything like that, it is rough. I cave beneath the pressure. But with you, well, I feel more comfortable around you. It's probably because we're almost the same age and your lessons feel more casual. So thank you. I'm very grateful to you. She looks down at the ground shyly. I hope it's alright that we're friends. I furrow my eyebrows at her. Why would you even want to be friends with a maid? You're supposed to be making friends with the nobles, not the servants. Emmeline frowns, and I can feel her deflate. She walks toward the window and sighs. I tried. They may not say anything, but I can feel them silently judging me. I wasn't born a princess, and I feel that they judge everything I do. They think that I smile too much, I'm not regal enough, they feel I'm too clumsy or too cheerful. Well, Emmeline definitely does not act like a noble. I can't say that I blame the nobles for being skeptical of her. Being with them suffocates me. I do my best to act like a princess, but the way they all look at me, it's as if they're waiting for me to make a mistake. Then, they're all, then they'll all have an excuse to jeer at me. Every girl dreams of becoming a princess, and yet this is not my dream. I really just miss being a normal girl. I miss my freedom. I look at her thoughtful. I think I can understand what Emmeline's feeling. Just like me, she was thrown into a world she was not ready to be a part of. Right now, we have no choice but to fit in. She never wanted my title in the first place, yet I accused her of stealing it. Have you told your mother how you feel? Emmeline shakes her head. No, not the king either. I don't want them to think I'm ungrateful. <clears throat> That's why I'm trying my best to become accustomed to all of this. I cross my arms. But you're not happy. I... I'm not. Everyone just assumes I'm happy because I smile a lot. She barely opens up to anyone, and yet she opened up to me. Had I been given the choice before I was cursed, I would have never listened to her. You should tell them how you feel rather than just keep it to yourself. Otherwise, the stress will continue to accumulate on your shoulders. I wish I could be more honest with them. I really do. I envy you for being able to speak your mind. She envies me? Well, I'd say we're making progress. She envies her. She's a friend. She's helping her with her lessons. <laughs> Emmeline takes a deep breath and sighs. The frown fades with the sigh and quickly replaced by a fragile smile. I'm sorry for ranting to you like that. I must have bored you with my story. I used to get so annoyed with her, but now that I've seen this side of her, I suppose she's not as terrible as I had first thought. Oh, I remember the mother wanted to see me after my lessons today. Allow me to escort you to the queen, then. Thank you. I don't know why we have this weird, like, advertisement page break. It's kind of cool, though, because before it didn't do that. Days pass without any real conflict. I run into Sir Alcaster again in the hallways, but his eyes pass over me as if I'm something to be ignored. Delora, who had been ignoring me as, as she had been busy with other priorities, returned to the marching yesterday to discuss something important with Parfait. It's not as if she has been any help since she came here. She mostly stays in my room while I run around doing errands for Emmeline, and taking on other chores as they're handed to me. Right now, I'm headed to the palace gates as I hurry to meet Emmeline. She's going out to town to meet Viorica again, and I was told to meet her here. 
Ah, it's Fritz. Paintivity. I turn around to see Fritz walking in my direction. Ever since I told him to refer to me by my name, he's been stumbling over not using my title. I rarely see him, but when I do, we do not have much time to discuss anything. Can I help you with anything, Fritz? It's been a while. Have you managed to complete one of your good deeds? Days after I had originally run into Fritz, I managed to have a quick conversation with him regarding my curse. It's been a long time since that conversation happened. Recently, I've barely seen Fritz. I hear rumors that he's been reassigned somewhere outside the palace. I show him my pendant and point the piece of the second glass slipper. I managed to get one several days ago. That's wonderful. I knew that you could get one. Only two more and then I can break this curse. Ah, Fritz. Miss Paintivity, I do not think the two of you were acquainted. We both turn our heads at the same time when Mithra suddenly appears from around the corner with the usual smile on his lips. <sighs> Sorry guys, I'm like congested. It's horrible. Sir Mithros. Fritz, I believe Sir Alcaster's looking for you. Right, sorry. Paintivity. I must take my leave now. Of course. Fritz bows to Sir Mithros before walking off, leaving me alone with Sir Mithros. Mithros does not say anything, but he continues to smile at me. His staring makes me feel incredibly uncomfortable. Is there something on my face? Excuse me. I curtsy and start to walk off when Sir Mithros calls my name. Paintivity. Yes? I just wanted to thank you for your hard work and dedication to our princess. I look at him, puzzled by his sudden gratitude. Don't worry, everything will soon be remedied. Excuse me? My apologies, I did not mean to keep you. He completely ignores my question. He dips his head slightly before turning and walking away, the smile still on his face. What was that all about? My guess is he knows what's going on. I, I feel like there's a lot of cursed people here that we don't realize like our curse. <laughs> Rod and Emmeline are already waiting for me outside the carriage by the time I arrive at the palace gates. Rod has his arms crossed and looks at me irritable. His face is perpetually stuck in that scowl, it seems. You're late. My apologies. You're so grumpy, but you've been late many times before too, Rod. Rod just shrugs his shoulders as he turns and heads into the carriage. Emmeline sighs before looking at me. Shall we? Of course. Sounds like she's happier, too, now that her and Emmeline have actually kind of talked-ish. The three of us sit in silence as a carriage rolls towards the town. The knight assigned a guard duty sitting out front with the driver, watching for any disturbances. Emmeline glances forlornly out the window while Rod silently looks out the other as he rests his chin on the palm of his hands. I notice Emmeline pausing to glance at Rod every now and then, looking restless. Finally, she breaks the silence. Are you still mad that I asked you to come along to visit Viorica? You could have declined the invitation, Rod. And if you would only tell me what happened between the two of you, I'd do my best to remedy the situation. Rod notices me, looking at him and scowls. He returns his moody gaze to the window. I have nothing to say, Em. But you used to be good friends with Viorga too, Rod. But then ever since you were... Emmeline stops herself, but I know that she's referring to his curse. After that day, you've kept your distance from her. Then, when you found out about the wedding, you became even colder towards her. Even if York is worried about you, Rod, she worries that she might have offended you somehow. Emmeline. There's a hint of warning in his tone. Is it possible that York is related to Rod's curse, considering the timing? Emmeline opens her mouth again to say something, but then suddenly stops and returns to the window, her expression mirroring Rod's own gloom. We're all silent until we arrive at the toy shop. Emmeline, good to see you again, and you too, Paintivity, was it? I nod in acknowledgement. Viorica nods politely at the knight who stands guard at the shop door. It's just the two of you today? Emmeline and I both turn around to see that Rod has indeed vanished. Emmeline frowns, looking both bewildered and disappointed. He was right behind us. I'll go look for him. Thank you. Just as I expected, Rod's leaning against the wall of an alley just outside the toy shop. He's not really going to want to talk. Maybe we'll just stay with him. I can tell by Rod's stiff posture that anything I say to him will fall on deaf ears, so I move to stand next to him instead. I lean against the wall with him. What are you doing? Keeping you company? Rod raises an eyebrow at me. Since when have you even liked my company? 
Well, I'd rather be here than stay inside the toy shop and listen to Emmeline and Viorga talk. So you're not here to try and get me to talk? Well, it's not as if you'd answer any of my questions. I've tried forcing you to talk and know how ineffective it is, but I'll be here if you do want to talk. Rod eyes me suspiciously. Since when did you start listening to others? Oh, something happened. When, are, when you are the personal mate of someone who enjoys talking, you learn to listen. Emmeline has been happier these past few months, I hate to admit it, but it seems to be because of you. Are you actually praising me? <laughs> Rod looks away, his cheeks tinted pink. Think whatever you like. I don't know why, but for some reason I'm happy that Rod gave me a compliment. Princess Pinktivity. Rod and I turn to the sound of a familiar voice. Waltz pauses in front of us with a big, bright smile. It's nice to see you again, Princess. Waltz, what are you doing here? Well, I was about to deliver a letter to the prince, but I guess that won't be necessary anymore. A letter? Is Lady Parfait asking for me? No, not just you. She wants to see the princess as well. Me? It's been a while since I was last at the Marchant. Is something wrong? They need to discuss something important with the princess. Come to the Marchant tonight. Tonight? But we're already here, so why not now? Waltz's eyes shift to our carriage. You're here with Princess Emmeline, yes? You can't make her wait too long. What they need to discuss with you is complicated and will take some time to explain. The toy shop door opens and Emmeline stands in the doorway as she says her goodbyes to Viorca. Remember, tonight. These are Waltz's last words before he slips back into the crowd. I feel like we have some type of, like, mob mentality going on. Like, don't forget, like, the guy standing in the alleyway gives you, like, random little information you have to figure out for yourself. Emmeline's visit with Viorca was briefer than I thought it would be. Now all of us are headed back to the palace. Rod's not uttered a word on our way back. I can tell that this is making Emmeline agitated as she continues to keep glancing at Rod expectantly. If you have something to say, say it. <laughs> Emmeline stares at me. You obviously want to say something to Prince Rod. The only way to get your answer is to ask him directly. Rod does not turn around. It's as if he doesn't even hear me. Emmeline clasps her hands and sighs. Well... I glance at Rod, who still persistently stares out the window, his eyes focused on nothing. He's pretending not to hear us. How immature. Rod. Viorica was sad that you weren't there today. She was certain that you stay outside to avoid seeing her. What is going on with you? I am not in the mood to answer your questions, Em. Emmeline grips the edge of her dress, her expression becoming more rigid. You've been keeping secrets from us ever since you were cursed. We don't even know why you were cursed or how to help you break it. Wait, the rest of the family doesn't know anything about circumstances of Rod's curse? I thought he had told them everything, but all they know is that he's cursed? We're a family. We're supposed to help each other through problems. Emmeline's hands are shaking as she gazes at her brother. M. The carriage stops, and as soon as the servant opens the door, Emmeline quickly steps out and rushes back towards the palace. Rod watches her go quietly, though his eyebrows are furrowed and he looks guilty. I silently shake my head at him before running after Emmeline. <clears throat> Emmeline stands in the hallway with her hands to her chest. She breathes slowly in and out as if she's on the verge of tears. When she notices me behind her, she turns away and wipes, wipes her eyes with the back of her hand. I'm sorry for storming off like that. I was just very frustrated at Rod. I said something I shouldn't have said back there. If anyone finds out about this, they won't. Your, your secret is safe with me. Emmeline flashes me a grateful smile before looking at the sky. M. One moment Rod's running down the hallway, the next he stopped in front of us and is trying to catch his breath. M, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, Rod, but right now I'd like to be alone. Of course. I'm sorry, Pantivity, but could you leave me for now? She doesn't even wait for my answer before walking away, leaving me alone with Rod. You made her cry, Rod. I'm fully aware of that. Why are you hiding your curse from your family? You wouldn't understand. I'm doing this to protect them. Protect them? Rod silently shakes his head. They wouldn't understand. Those are the last ominous words Rod speaks before rushing off, leaving me alone in the hall. What happened to him? Now I can see why this chapter is totally named after him. Because there's so much we don't know. <laughs> the hallways are silent at this time of night as most everyone in the palace prepares for bed. I'm now on my way to our meeting place. Rod told me earlier to wait for him here. I thought that he would make me go to the marching by myself after what transpired with Emmeline, but I was wrong. 
Emmeline was so upset today. I've never seen her like this before. I turned my thoughts back to the march and, and to what Walt said earlier. I wonder what Parfait wants to talk about with us. I feel my heart beating erratically against my chest. Why do I feel like something bad is going to happen? I realize I've been standing in the open for a while. Perhaps I should move. People might find my standing here suspicious. I start walking again, and I'm surprised when I feel a hand close around my wrist and pull me into the darkness. I open my ma mouth, but a hand muffles my scream. Shh! Rod? Rod's gaze is, gaze is icy. He speaks quietly, but I can feel the anger simmering underneath his words. What if someone saw you standing here? Have you even thought about how they might get suspicious? <laughs> Figuring she just said that. His tone is so accusatory that for a moment I can't find my voice. But then he's right, I should have been more careful. Sorry. Rod stares at me, surprised. What? I never thought I'd hear you apologize, especially to me. Oh, well, at least I know how to apologize, unlike you. <laughs> and why would I ever have reason to apologize to you? Because you've done nothing but treat me coldly, even when I have done nothing to personally attack you. Rod scowls at me, but does not say anything. Instead, he sighs and takes my hand, pulling me after him. Cool, she changed into the other dress that they gave her. What? Let's go before the guards see us. I have no energy to argue with Rod, so I allow him to pull me along. I'm sorry. What? He apologized to me? Don't make me repeat myself. I did not hear you clearly. If there's one thing I know about you, it's that you're not deaf. Of course I'm not. Shh, someone will hear you. I glare at Rod, but he doesn't respond. <laughs> Princess, your hand is really warm. <laughs> from Sebi. <laughs> Rod freezes in place and glares at Sebi, who seems to be shrugging. Your thoughts are too loud, Rod. Through the dim lights, I can actually see a faint blush on Rod's cheeks. You are blushing? <laughs> I am not. He lets go of my hand and starts to walk toward the secret passage with me trailing behind him. We look around to make sure no one's in sight before we both slip inside. I follow closely behind Rod in silence. My eyes move up toward the little bunny plush hanging on his shoulder. Sebi, I've been wondering, have you ever talked with Rod's family as yourself? Rod suddenly stops and scowls over his shoulder at me. What? I'm asking Sebi, not you. No, I don't, Princess. Rod doesn't want me to talk with others since he thinks that I might say something unnecessary. So much for that. You still speak even when it is unnecessary. In the dim lighting of the tunnel, I think I can see a faint pink in Rod's cheeks, but it's probably a trick of the strange lighting. Rod's right. Sebi has blurted out his thoughts more than a number of times. Um. I don't know. So I guess we're talking to Sebi directly, which, I don't know. I didn't really think about that decision. I'm kind of like, I don't want to be rude. <laughs> well, there are thoughts that he prefers to keep to himself, like his thoughts on karma and his feminine voice, or his... Rod suddenly clamps Sebi's face, and I can actually see the poor plush struggling to get away from his hold. You're crushing the poor toy. Rod glares at me before finally releasing Sebi. Rod can be so brutal at times. I remember the time he almost threw me out the window for saying that one lady had a hideous dress. Rod glares at Sebi once again. He readies his fingers to pinch him again, but Sebi hurriedly apologizes before Rod can touch him. Okay, okay, I'll stop talking now. Rod sighs and continues walking. Rod, have you spoken with Emmeline since the earlier incident? No. As much as I want to ask him again about his curse, I doubt he'll d divulge anything right now. I decide to keep my thoughts to myself as we head for the Marchin. So I'm hoping I'll get to um, finish this section and find out what's going on. And then we'll go from there. Let's see. Let's see here. I am... There we go. Okay. When we arrive at the march and Parfait and Dolores are there to welcome us, the others, however, are nowhere in sight. Ah, it's been a while, Princess. Thank you for bringing her here safely, Rod. Where is everyone? They're all resting in their rooms now. It wasn't necessary that they be here for what Dolores and I want to discuss with you. I'll be staying in the, ta in the tavern then. Rod's about to head for the tavern when Dolores stops him. You don't have to leave. What we're going to say involves you too, since you're staying at the palace as well. Rod looks at her curiously, but asks no questions. Guessing this goes back to what Delora was looking into about other happenings. Parfait and Delora gesture, over us, gesture us over to the settee where we all take our seats. This is something Rod and I must know because we're in the palace? 
Um, I have a bad feeling about this. Before we start, I'd like to congratulate you on your first good deed, Princess. Delora told me all about it, and I can see the extra piece on your necklace as well. Parfait smiles at me, her eyes filled with pride. Her faith in me rekindles the dwindling confidence I had. If only you'd seen how happy Delora was when she announced it to us. You didn't have to go into specifics, Parfait. Oh, are you embarrassed, Delora? She smiles at Delora teasingly before turning back to me. Anyway, I know you can do it, Princess. Only two more to go, and you can break your curse. Yeah, keep up the good work, Princess, and you too, Rod. So, what is it that you wanted to discuss with us? I conducted a little investigation while I was with Paintivity in the palace, and I found out something important. Something important? I discovered that there's a witch in the palace. Yeah, I knew it. A witch? In the palace? I felt a tinge of magic while I was there. It was faint, but definitely there. I don't remember feeling it before when I was there as your doll, princess. It seems that the witch is using a glamour to hide himself or herself from us. I think it's Mithros. Or Alcaster. It's, it's something. A glamour is a magic that only very experienced, experienced witches can cast, which means the witch we're dealing with is no ordinary witch. They have the potential to be very powerful. But what would a witch be doing in the palace in the first place? This witch could be after the king, but... But what? Parfait and Dolores glance at each other, looking conflicted. It is Parfait who faces me first, her, exp her expression grave. So what happens when I get going too fast, I'm like... Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> I'm afraid there's some other possibility we must make you aware of, Princess. And in order for us to explain it, we must give you the truth. Oh, great. Seems epic. Okay, we're at chapter 6. We got through a whole chapter, but I kind of want to know what's going on. Um... You know what? No, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm I'm gonna save it. We're gonna we're gonna leave it on a cliffhanger, and then um, we'll pick it back up. So I say this every time. I don't know how many chapters there are, and I want to sit down and do like a couple of chapters, um, but right now I just don't have the time to do it. So one chapter at a time for now, and then as soon as I get a chance, I'm gonna do a couple more like together. It'll be a longer one, but um, you guys will still get the story. So. Um, We'll find out what the truth is later, but it's kind of confirming what I thought, that there's someone weird in the palace. So I will see you guys next time. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the button. If you have something to say, leave it in the comments for me below. I'll leave the description as usual. And um, so we'll pick this up on chapter six as soon as possible, and we'll figure out what's going on. So now I think the story's really picking up. So. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it, and thanks for sticking it out there with me, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. As always, thanks for joining the universe. Bye. Oh yes, here we go. Oop, another clue. Sniff it out, George. A Bible. An old Bible. Take. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on a second. Red Walsh Baptist. Father, wait a minute, hold on. Oh.